Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter. And I'm obviously back with another jelly plate play, as you will have guessed by my plate here. However, I'm doing something that I've never done before. So, um, I'm going to work my way through it. I'm going to try and explain what I mean. And it's a bit of an experiment for, for me personally. I know it can be done. I've just never done it. Um, and what I want to do is I want to create a print that only gets pulled once. So I want a completed print with all of its layers in one pull. So let's move this out of the way a second and I want to give you a rough explanation and maybe a bit of an example of what I mean. Now, so let's look at a couple of prints that I've done in the past and I want to explain about the layers and how my brain functions when I actually create something like this. So these are multi-layered prints. Some of you have probably already seen some of these created in past videos. Now there's not a whole lot of them here because I wasn't going to make you sit through maybe 100 prints, but I thought I'd pull out a few that gave me some good examples. So when I create one of these prints, I normally do a background and pull the print. And then maybe I'll do the next layer and I'll pull a print. And then I'll do the next layer and pull the print again. And then eventually I will normally do the black pieces I put the print back down for the final time and lift it and hence I end up with a finished print. Now as you can see in most of these there are definitely different layers of colour, of texture, of design built through it. It's all visual texture, it's not texture texture unless I put the paint on quite thickly like some of this I can actually feel it with my fingertips and that's just because the layers of paint are built up and see so you can actually be really subtle there are several layers here. There's the black, there's the burgundy, there's the gold, there's the original pink background color, there's the stencil pieces. Um, and again, here's another one. I love this one. Um, this is built up of many, many layers. So what I'm gonna try and do is, I'm gonna try and reverse engineer this in my brain. So whereas I normally start with the background and then do subsequent pulls to build up the different layers, I'm going to work in reverse. So the first thing I put on my plate will be the darker, most contrasted bits of my image. I'm then gonna let that dry a little bit and then add another section of detailing and color. And I'm gonna build it up so then eventually, when all those different individual layers and bits of detail have dried, I will then put one layer over the complete back of it in paint put my paper down and then I'm going to leave it to fully dry and for the wet paint that is the final level to seep into all of the other layers of paint so that when I pull it, it will be one completed pull. It's either going to work or it's not going to work. I know that it can be done. I have seen other people do it. I, however, have never done it. And I think it's going to be a really interesting way to try and get my brain to think in reverse. Um, now what I've done is because it'd be really boring, it will be literally watching paint dry if I only worked on one plate. So I've got my 12 by 12, I've got my eight by 12, and I've got my, no, wait, this is my eight by 10 and this is my nine by 12. So I'm gonna have three plates on the go, however, I'm only really planning to create one print. I will end up with three. It's obvious because I'm going to be making three. Anyway, um, all of the stock I'm using is white card stock. Here are the details of it. It's 250 gram, um, 250 GSM. That's what I normally use for my printing anyway. So, um, but you can print on anything. You'll see me do postcards, which are on thinner. You'll see me use tissue paper. So basically Kerry needs to be quiet and get on with it. So. Okay, we're thinking of drama. For me, the first thing I think when I think drama is actually black. So I'm gonna, I'm working in acrylic paint only. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do black. Now, I like the effect of the edges being ever so slightly vignetted, um, as if they've got some grunge on the side. So I'm gonna move that over slightly. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my black. Now you don't really need to see me braying out on the palette, but I think it is reasonably in shot. So I'm gonna load up my brayer. And I don't want 
it to be too much but I've got on there I'm just going to catch the edges of my print just so that I've got a bit of darkness on there as I go along I'm going to do that with each of them because that's that's the look I kind of want to go for I want to have some some bit of grunge on here So, and bring the other one in. I hope the moving in and out of plates isn't going to drive you nuts, but it's the only way I could think of actually doing this. Now, as the paint's drying, of course, I'm getting less and less to be able to brayer off. That actually doesn't bother me because it's those little bits that are going to be interesting. I'm going to come back to my 12 by 12 and I'm going to try and lift out some of this here because I don't want that hard edge so just using the brayer to pick up that hard edge and then lift away some of the harder stuff and it was only this one that did it all oh no it didn't I'm lying to you already this one actually has it on as well so I'm going to come in with my brayer now if it gets to the point where the paint's too dry I can always come in with the damp cloth, which is exactly what I think I'm going to do here. Just clean my brayer off. I'm just going to get my damp cloth. I'm just going to take out that harsh line. And then I'm almost dabbing at this because I'm trying to lift up bits of paint, but I don't, I don't want it to look manicured. So I think, let's take that back a little bit further. Look, I've got some small bubble wrap here. I think if I come in and put a few areas of white on here, because white and black are usually my contrasts. So if I reach for some black and white, maybe I used it all. Okay, I'll start start another one. That's a bit of gunk there that I don't need on my plate. Again, I don't need a whole plate full of... Um, the acrylic because I'm just lifting parts of it but I do want a reasonable coating of it on here so that I've got something that will give me working time to pick up with so I'm just going to come in put some areas down now I do tend to work in threes so I think I'm going to keep that as a habit because it usually works in my favor that's Bring in some of these. Try not to be too regimented about it because that would just spoil it for me. Because it just would. Now, I don't know what um, orientation these prints are going to finally be shown in, whether they're going to be portrait, whether they're going to be landscape. I don't actually know. Right, so I really do think I'm going to need to get this cloth cleaned in a little moment. So, right, let's pull this one back in. So we've got we've got some stuff on here. So have a quick look. Um, white on white is probably not the best thing for you to look at, but we're going to add a colour anyway. Now, I've done with I've done with dots. Let's not do dots. Um, I do like the thought of adding the odd square of colour in. Now these. These rubber stamps, can you see that? That's from www.dowcrafts.co.uk. I believe these are called Whispers, but this was actually a 2003 range. Um, I love them. I use them in my journaling. I, I use them to do backgrounds. I use them for this. So I'm not sure whether they're still available, but if they are, hunt them down. They're really, really useful. So I think I have, right, I've got Arteza Terracotta here. I'm going to come in and see if I can just put a few squares on here. Again, I don't need a lot of paint. I'm just, I'm trying to be very good about that. I have a really bad habit of putting too much paint down. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to use this one. Just lift it up. As you can see, I'm just overlapping. Bring that down the side. So I quite like that. Actually, I quite like that up there. I 
Okay, I think that's enough of that. Just um, stamp. I think this one, I'd quite like this one. Let's, I'm trying to, once I've used something, trying to put it out of the way so I don't repeat everything all the time. Um, I am going to use a different version of it though. I think I'm going to go, let's see, let's make this the blue plate. So if I'm having a blue plate, I need to have the darker colours first. So a little bit of blue on there. That looks as if it started separating. It shouldn't have separated. There you go. Uh, where's a bit of kitchen paper? I'll make sure that bit that's separated out from its carrying medium is not going to cause me a problem. So, okay, that doesn't look right. Oh, I've got the wrong one. That's what right. it's this one. Right, that needs a little bit more. Um, you will find with acrylic paints, the more fluid the acrylic paints, the more likely if they're just left stood around that they will separate out. Just give them a good shake. I'm, I'm, I find I do that quite often. So coming in, I don't mind that it looks like it's got a separated effect to it. That's actually really interesting. Let's just clean that off on that. Now, put that one. Sorry, having a moment with that one. Right. So I've got this on the go. Let's take this out of the way for a second. So I'm wondering, what shall I do for green? Um, I think I want to get away from these because I've already done quite a bit of that. So let's put that to one side. That's what I might just do the big one because then I can put maybe a couple of blocks of that on there. Okay. Um, I believe this is a transparent. Iridescent, iridescent. I could have sworn I thought this was a transparent, but I'm going to use it anyway. So just a little bit of green on there. Go to my brayer. Yeah, that's a transparent. Absolutely to assure you that's a transparent. Oh look, the colour of the box is green anyway. It'll just give that little bit of light catching that it's gonna add a little bit of interest to that. So I'll just let's clean that block off again. Now I do wash these occasionally. Um, normally I will come in after I've done the session and give them a good old clean so that if there's any fine details, I don't tend to lose the fine details in the stamp because I've been adding and adding and adding to them. Okay, so that's given me a little bit. I can see that I've got some bits on there. So, right, let's have a little think now. We've got that on our plate so far for our main pull. Um, and as I said, I did want to use um, autumnal colours on this or colours that would fit within an autumn theme. Right, so I'm done with the rubber blocks. Um, I do have these and I quite like this one. I'm wondering. <clears throat> I quite like this one. I think I'm going to use that one. Right, and I think I might use it across the cross several of them, right? Um, awesome colours. Now I have to remember that eventually there's going to be one colour over the complete background of this. I think I'd quite like to come in with maybe wine red. I wonder what wine red really looks like. Well, it's quite a nice dark moody colour, isn't it? Let's use some of that. Oops. I always pull them off over my plate and I shouldn't do that. Right, again, just need a little bit of it on my plate because I'm not using, I'm not covering the total thing at the moment. Clean that off on there. So I'm just going to come in, I'm going to take this and just touch it down in places. And as I said, I think I want to use that in all three of them. And my thinking on that is, because this is blue, um, red is a warm colour, blue is a cool colour. 
However, um, the two of them make a really nice purple. So if I was to add purple in here at some point, it would make sense then for the, the, the wine red color to be in there. And this one, I just want to put it on here. There you go, right, stamp that off on my book. I have to give that a little bit of a wipe in a moment. Okay, I'm not going to go through my entire stash of all numbers. I like numbers. I think these might be a bit big for what I'm thinking though. I'm not going to go through every one of my stencils to show them to you. That is potentially another video at some point. I do quite like this stencil. I'd like it even better if that hair wasn't stuck in the middle of it. There you go. I think I can add bits of that. Let's add bits of that to this autumn one. Now, obviously one of the colours that's not on here at the moment is orange. Um, and I'm wondering whether it's, it's a little bit too early to add orange. What I'm going to do is I've got a piece of a sponge here. I'm just going to cut Cut this in half because I don't need oil. What I tend to do when it comes to sponges is I buy, I buy the bigger bath sponges or sponges for baby washing. I get them from my inexpensive store like mine's a pound land or a pound store or a pound world. I think yours in America would be a dollar store or something like that. And I tend to cut them into pieces. I mean I can wash them afterwards if I choose. Half the time do I? Probably not. No. I think I want to add a touch of black to this. Actually, I've got a really dark brown somewhere. Where's that really dark brown gone? Okay, there's this called Van Dyke Brown. I don't know if I've ever used it. I've obviously taken the lid off it. But I think this might be what I'm looking for. Again, put a little bit down. Give it a little bit of a brayer just so that it's, it's on there. Because I'm going to pick this up. Let's just put that on there. I'm going to pick it up on the sponge and work it through the sponge. This way I'm only getting a thin layer. Um, I'm also not hopefully going to have it seeping under, under any of the edges. It's a technique I like to do. I'm not always doing it on my gel plate. But as you can see, I get some wonderful results this way. I'm quite liking this colour actually. Let's just pull that down there so it matches around the bottom. I think I need a bit more of that on there. Yeah, it's it's a technique I like to use. As I said, I use it in my art journal a lot. Um, I tend to forget about doing it on a gel plate, but it's a great way of not overloading your gel plate because the more you put on your gel plate, the longer it's going to take to dry. And I'd rather it not take forever to dry, to be honest. I'm just looking for hints of this. That's nice. Now do I want to be predictable and put one up the side? No, I don't want to be predictable and put one up the side. Let's just put um, that up. There. Actually, let's look for a stencil before or a mask before I look to the others. Right, I do seem to remember the PM Artist Studio had... Oh, that's the one I want to use too. Let's remember to come back to that one. Um, I thought there was one in here that I really wanted. I thought it was sea themed one. I think this is it. Cellular membrane. It's this one. As you can see, it's well loved by me. So, and I thought I'd quite like to use that one on the one that is blue. So, this is my blue one. Let's turn it this way on. So, I'm, I'm not married to an orientation at the moment, but I do need to do something eventually. Right, uh, where do I put that next bit of sponge? Right, I'm going to come in now and see the colour that's on here. I quite like that colour. Um, and I think I bought a new pot of it the other day. There you go, Sea Aqua. And have I used this? I've opened it, that's a good one. I, I know why it's open, because I tend to swatch my paints. So as an example, I've made myself a swatch book and in here is every single paint I've got 
what the name is, the brand, whether it's opaque, whether it's transparent. And if I'm going shopping for paints, I will very often take this with me because who of us can remember what paints you've already got? Now, if I need one, say, say I've run out of art Arteza Opaque Gold A705, I'll put a little post-it note by it, and then when I'm in the shop, I know I need to replace that one. But I, I do generally use my, my pad for that. So until I find a new paint, and then of course I go ahead and buy a new paint. Right, let's see how this one works out. A little bit of a brayer out on my plate. So let's see, working in areas that aren't necessarily already covered. This is quite nerve wracking because I just don't know what this is going to look like. I mean, I can continually flip things over, obviously, um, but not knowing how things are going to behave in the final, because when I come back to pull these tomorrow, it could be that the paper tears. I'm hoping it doesn't tear, but it could be that the paper tears. It could be that um, bits of the image don't come off if you know what I mean. So not really sure how I'm going to react if that happens because after investing time in doing it, no one ever wants it to go wrong. So that's just a little bit of a quick look. See, it's giving me little pieces in there. I think we're getting to the point where I need to start thinking more blue with this one. Right, that's another one that's there. Um, right, the next one is a green one. So let's see what I've got as far as I think would look good with green. Mm, sorry, am I in the shot? That's a bit predictable, but I don't mind that. That's, that's nice and small. And this is a smaller plate, so. Right, I think at this point I need to be thinking a little more drama with this one because it's really, really pale at the moment. I think I want to put a really good punch of a dark green into it. Actually, would the jade green be wrong? Hmm. Don't know. Let me have a little look. Shamrock green is definitely wrong. Olive green. I wonder what olive green looks like. That's quite a dark green. Let's go olive green. Um, it looks like it's a semi-transparent, if I've read that symbol right. Um, and I could easily have read the symbol wrong, so please forgive me if I've given you the wrong details there. It was totally unintentional. So, got a little bit more on there than I kind of wanted, but I'm okay with that. Let's put that one back in there as well. I try to keep my um, paints in boxes of warms and cools, and then my metallics are in a different area totally, um, because I never really know how to categorise um, things like warms and cools when it comes to metallics. So I, I basically just put them in a separate box and then I know when it comes to reaching for metallics, they're good to go. Okay, loving that. Let's put some of that down there. I'm liking that one. I'm going to leave that a second because I think I'd like to add some of that to this one. Um, I'm just really liking the greenness that this is giving me, if there is such a word as greenness. So, I um, wonder whether you've tried this. I'm, I must admit, as I said, I, I have seen it done, but just not by me. Um, but it's an interesting way of thinking, just trying to think small to large dark to light it's it's just it's almost the reverse of what i normally and naturally do i like that a lot that gives it more of an organic feel to it that's that's brilliant i'm loving that right let's just get this plate cleaned off a little bit with a bit of tissue um it's it's an overcast day here in wales um, you may see the sun come occasionally. Oh, don't stick to that, please. Oh, well, there you are. Just taking that bit up straight away. Um, 
However, it is quite warm here, so I'm really hoping things are going to dry a lot quicker. Um, let's have a quick flip. Okay, that's getting interesting. Right, um, I'm going to put some of these diamonds on here, and I think now is the time I'm going to add some orange to this. Um, and see if I can find quite a pungent orange, quite a bright one, because whatever I put behind it, of course, is going to mute it down slightly. Now, I'm putting a reasonably thick coating on my palette. And I'm doing that because um, to be able to pick up paint, you have to have enough paint down there to be able to do this. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to lay this on there, let it pick up some paint. It's never going to give me a perfect impression, but it is going to leave me paint. And I just want it in three places. I'm probably going to want to clean that off. I don't like that straight line there. So if I go in quite quickly with a cloth, I can take those straight lines off without contaminating anything else. OK, that was cute. I like that. Right, Let's go back to this one, which I think I need to clean orange off there, because if I put blue and orange together, guess what? It's not going to be a pretty colour. Right now, there's there's circles on here, and I quite like the idea of some of these circles on here. Mm. Right, I know the eventual pull is probably going to be um, dark blues on here, so maybe I need to think about. I did mention I might use a purple on here eventually. Purple, what is that's a transparent purple, that's not a bad thing. So let's pull that in, put a bit of that on my palette, give that a bit of a brayer out. Now, this is going to be slightly tricky because I can, I've only got a small palette. And I don't really want to have square edges anywhere. And if I do have a square edge like that, guess what? I'm coming in to clean that sucker off. So. I don't mind the end there being squared. That's fine. I don't actually mind really that little bit there, but I'd rather it wasn't there. So that's that one got another layer of something on it. The blue one is done. This one, however, needs something added to it. And I'm actually not going to, I'm going to use this one. Um, and what I want to do is I want to see if I can pick up some of this and put it all along the sides as almost framing it in. Um, oh, it's not paint. So I just want to choose a colour that will complement that. So I, need I wanted green, but green for me is very much um, organic, it's very much woodland, it's very, it, so I think I want to put in some form of brown. Now I know I used terracotta before so, so maybe I'm going to use that terracotta again if I can find it and here it is, there's the terracotta. Now I'm going to have to hopefully not be out of shot here but I'm going to have to use my palette in this direction or orientation this time because I need to pick up these edges and pop them on here. Now I'm probably just aiming for a patch here and a patch there. Or maybe a patch there and a patch there. Undecided on that one. But I know I don't need a lot of anything on here. Just a little bit of interest, just again to work on the contrast. Right, working quite quickly because I know this is going to dry on me. I think down there. I don't mind that I've got that on there, that's fine with me. That's 
I like that to have been a bit further along. That's fine, I don't mind that. So it just adds more interest. I don't mind that. Um, I do mind some of that, so I'm not sure whether I'm just going to pick up some of this and do that. What will that look like on the other side? Okay, that's not bad. I've got interest in it. It wasn't what I planned, but you know what? Sometimes happy accidents happen. So let's put that over there. Right, so we're now at the point where I think everything is pretty much at its final stages. Um, I would like to look and see what have I got on here. Can I put something behind all of this? So you're kind of getting an idea of where we're going. Just trying to think. I'd quite like something in the background, but I don't know what it is. And by the background, I mean the back background. The, the final layer before I put the back on it. And I'm thinking I want to start using a metallic in there. So I don't know whether you can see. I don't want to do leaves again. I've got squares. I certainly don't want flowers. I do like dots. Honeycomb would be really baffling to put that in the background. I know I've got them. Oh, that's another one I quite like too. This Polynesian one's quite nice and I quite like that one a lot. Okay, I do have strips. Um, maybe some of this would be okay. Right, I think that'll, and once we've done that, I think we're then gonna go on to choosing colors and literally doing the backgrounds. So, I think I'll do this one for the ocean one, and this one for this one. Right, I'm going to need a new piece of sponge. So as you can see, I just literally cut chunks off the sponge. Um, if I'm doing a lot of work, I will throw these in a bowl of water and um, wash them up and use them again. Sometimes if I'm doing just one project, and I'm not doing it very often. I tend to just let it go and just disperse with them in the bin. So, right. Um, I wanted to put metallics. I think a copper on here. Choice, right. I've got copper by Amsterdam. It's one of my favourites to use. It's a nice creamy consistency. It's got a really good thing. To, before I roll that out, let's see where this is going. Pop you down there. I'm not going to roll you out. I'm just going to go in with this. Right, remember the idea is we're adding bits of interest. We're not doing the whole mask or the whole stencil. I'm just literally using patches of the design. Or I would have got my finger underneath it. That's what I'm talking about. Let's turn it on this side. So if I tend to duplicate anything, which I probably will, it won't be obvious. And I think up there could do with a little bit of something as well. There you go. And I think if I did any more on that one, it would be total and utter overkill. So let's leave that one for a second. Right, let's take that off my palette. Right, this one hasn't been used a lot, so I'm going to put that one to one side. Maybe we'll use it later. See if I can get any of the design off the stencil onto my rollout sheet. I doubt it because, oh, actually I'm wrong. I actually did. There you go. I had excess paint on the other side, so loving that. So right, so that's that one dealt with. Um, the ocean one. Right, this ocean one is slightly bothering me because it looks really busy. And I think I want to take away pieces of it. It's, which is easy enough done, I'll just wipe them away. 
it's just it looks too busy I don't I don't know what what it is that makes it look busy for me but I think if I just take some of these purple rings away I think that might just make me a little bit happier I mean, some of the purple may disappear anyway, because, as I said, this is probably going to have a darkish background to it of blues and things like that. So what will happen is the purple will kind of disappear a bit. Right. OK, I think that's OK. Right. Let's think about this. So I said I wanted to put some metallics on. So what about the silver? I don't... I'm, not even sure I've ever used the silver. Right. Again, I'm going to come in and sponge this through. I don't know how much it's going to show, because as I said, it's if it's not a transparent paint, it's a it's a semi-transparent. Let's put stuff on there. I don't mind that. And it's a little bit regimented putting it around the edges, but it's where I feel I want to put it currently. Um, and maybe just a little bit in there, not all the way across. Take that off there. Give it a bit of a brayer on to my brayer off and see if it does leave a little bit. Not a huge amount, but it's a good design, so I like that. Right, let's put that down to one side. So I'm looking at our last plate, which was this one, and I wanted to use this. I think this needs black. Or it needs something really, really dark. And I I wonder whether I can use that Van Dyke again. I think we're going to go with that Van Dyke again. This could become my new favourite colour. How scary is that? Right. I can use the silver one. It's not going to do it any harm. Right. Now, I'm not wanting absolutely perfect stenciling. I don't mind the pieces look a little bit unfinished or a little bit... I mean, that's nice. I don't mind that. It's just... It's finding that balance of what you want versus what you can actually get. So... So I catch up. The ones just either side of it. And I think I'd like maybe a half down there. That's okay. I don't mind that. That's cool. I'm going to take a break. We'll look, at the, we'll look at where we're at and we'll see whether we can make some decisions on colours now. But I'm probably going to do the same debate when I come back anyway, because it is my nature to do that. Right. Um, but I need to let all these layers dry. They're going to pull off. OK, so that's what I've got from this side. But this way, I've got that. Now, I think I'm definitely going to be dealing with... Um, more earthy tones on this one. Um, I will probably throw a couple of metallics in there as well. Um, and maybe a bit of red iron oxide or something like that, just 
to really amp up the oranges. Um, but I, I quite like that. We we will. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm okay with where that one's at. Right. This one, the underwater one. It kind of. It's to me. It's just a little bit busy, and I can't work out what I want to do about it. Now I did say I only wanted one print, so I'm not worried that I've got. I have to prove. Something. You know what? Okay. Kerry being bold here. I don't want that in the middle. That's just. Let's just take this out of the equation. Right. Let's have a look now. Okay, I'm happier, but I do want something in the middle. So let's come back to that one. This one I'm extremely pleased with. I'm liking where that's going. Um, I'd quite like that not to be like that, but then that's the good thing. I can, I can subtract from the plate should I wish to. So there you go, that, just that line there. And that one there needs to go as well. So right, so I think this one, once we get it back on it, and I think that's probably going to be maybe a lime greenish type something or other. Yes, I think probably a lime greenish colour. So this one. I don't know what it is about this I don't like, guys. Part of me wants to just wipe the entire thing off. And just go, that was just an exercise in something. Um... It just isn't working for me. I don't know what it is about it that isn't working for me. It's it's back to that gut feeling thing. You know, I'm going to be brave. It's just going. I'm going to clean the plate off. Um, I'm not going to waste any more paint on it because I know that if I don't like it at this stage, I'm probably never going to like it at its final stage because all I'll see is the things I don't like about it. So anyway, let's just see if I can. I wonder whether it's because it's portrait or landscape and I'm not used to. I'm used to square. Not that that should be a problem. Right. Let's do something. Let's just do something. I'm going to come in with numbers, right, if I'm putting numbers down, I need numbers to be reversed to be able to pull them off. So, let's put numbers, if I get that straight, it would be helpful. Right, put numbers down there. Um, I really do like this, I'm going to add this in up here. I need something to go there. Maybe a bit of wonky net tucked under there would help. I don't want to cover that bit. I mean, I don't want to print that bit, so I'm just going to use a post-it note. Cover that bit up there. We've got a bit of plate exposed there, so. Let's just get that bit covered up as well. Make sure nothing else is uncovered. Right, let's just whip something down on this plate. What colour was this supposed to be? This was supposed to be the blue one. Right, let's get some, let's get some blue on this page. Right, what's this? This is ultramarine. This is knock your socks off blue as far as I'm concerned. So that's, that's a good shake. Um, it's by Arteza, by the way. So I'm going to literally go in and brayer the paint directly through the stencils. Now I know this is not a fully opaque colour, so I know that I'm just getting bits coming through. And that's completely fine with me. That's kind of where I'm going with this to start with. Let's 
just clear my brayer off a bit. Right, let's take that out of there. That out of there. That one off of there. Right, I've got a basis of something on there. Stuff all over the darn place now. Right, I think I want to come in and I want to put um, something on with one of my mark making things. Uh, just bear with me. I think I'm going to come in with this one. So let's just put that up the top. Um, put the blue to one side. I think I want to come in with something that's got a bit of a punch to it. This is, I think this is quite a punchy colour. Yeah, it's funny how sometimes things just don't work, no matter how much you work at it, you inherently know it's not going to work. Or at least I feel I inherently know it's not going to work. And if it's not going to work, I'm not going to continue on because unfortunately, the way my brain sees things, if it's not working now, it's definitely not going to work no matter what I do to it. So let me just pick up some of that. Pop it down there. Pick up some in the middle. And hopefully it gives me a checker somewhere. It does right in the middle. That's fine. Yeah, that's getting interesting. Pink. I need pink on there. Right, I've got this. It's a new pink for me. Um, anyone who follows PM Artist Studio will know that I actually sent Mariah, Mariah and Patricia the, the pink I bought a while ago and I just couldn't get a handle on. It was called Opera Pink, but it was so flipping neon, I, I just couldn't look at it. It just, it was just... It was horrible as far as I was concerned. So, right, I've got an idea of how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to get a bit of tissue paper. Now, normally I would do a technique when I'm trying to put patches of colour down. And what I normally do is I put the paint on the plate and then I gently let the paper touch down on it. Now, as I'm doing a one pour print, I can't do that. So I'm going to see whether... I can actually lift off bits of the paper on my tissue paper and actually add little bits onto here, which it seems that I can. There you go, that's just giving me a little something on there. Right, so I need something that's punchy, guys. Let's go for the good old copper. I do like a touch of copper. Right, and I'm going to do the thing I did before with the bray. I'm literally going to flick it down just to add a bit of metallic into the background of this. And I think we're going to call that one done. Right, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go and have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, sit down, have a think about this. Um, and when I come back, we'll put the backs on them. I have no idea what that's going to look like. This could end up being one of those prints where I do have to put a foreground on it. Um, but as I said, it was only going to make one print and that was a 12 by 12. So we'll see where we go from that. So thanks for your patience, guys. I will speak to you soon. So here I am back again. It's been at least an hour. I've had lunch. This is dry. It's a little cool to the touch, but I don't know whether that's because it's a gel plate and it's not retaining its heat. We've got this on this side and I need to work out what I'm going to punch this through with. Um, it was going to be blues. I'm not sure it is going to be blues now. Um, I'm just going to put paint down and just pull this one because this is the one that's um, an unplanned. Let's put it this way. I've got my piece of paper which will fit on there and lift the whole print. So just trying to think what I'm going to pull on here. Right. So if I look at this, I've got blues and turquoise and I've got some of the copper on here. So I'm thinking I need to amp this up a little bit. 
Um, I think this colour might work. I could really go out on a limb and do this sort of colour. Actually, if I take that away, I'm wondering whether... Let's be completely outrageous about this. Let's just put green and yellow on here and just make this... I don't know. It's just going to be what it is. Um, I don't want a huge amount on the plate. I'm just going to put stuff down so that um, I'll have enough to pull what's down here. Is that a little bit of crud? It was a little bit of crud. Thank goodness I found it already. Um, I actually think, while I'm thinking about it, that I would quite like to drop in some sort of metallic in here. Um, I'm not sure how much it's going to show through, so let's put the green in. It seems that I'm going to go for a more of a greeny, a greeny colour palette for this one. So my aim is to put a reasonably thin coat down, mix it up as I go along, just to give myself an interesting background, because I don't think the foreground I actually created is hugely interesting. But we'll see. I mean, who knows? I mean, I've been surprised before. And I'm sure I will be surprised again. So I'm giving this an even rearing. Now remember, these are going to sit overnight, so I need enough paint to reactivate um, the paint underneath. So pop that down as such. Make sure it's fully in contact. Right, I'm just going to use a bit of tissue over the back just so that I can rub my hand over the back without moving the paper itself. Well, I'm guessing the postman's around. I can hear Biscuit barking. Well, I'm trying to make sure that the edges are pressed down first. We'll flip this over in a second. It'll give us an impression of what this is going to look like. As I said, I have a feeling this one may need a little touch of help later on. Um, with a little bit of drama added to the foreground. But I'm not upset by that. I'm not classing it as a failure. It's a lesson learned. So we're not pulling this until tomorrow, but what would this look like? Actually, that's not bad. I do think it could use some black on it for some drama or maybe some magenta or something. So that's the first one done. Let's pull this little baby in. Now this is the one that was meant to be our green one, although we just seem to have done sort of a greeny one anyway. So, how do I feel about this one? I quite like this, it's just finding the right colour for this. Let's have a look from the other side. Copper would be lovely, but I think copper is wrong. I've got this colour called buttermilk, which I really quite like the buttermilk. And I'm trying to think, is there a colour that I would mix in with the buttermilk just to give it a bit of a greenish hue? Now I've got this sage green pearl colour, which might work. I'm going to do this on my palette though, this mixing, because I'm really a little bit apprehensive about what this is going to look like. So but it's all an experiment, isn't it, people? It's all an experiment. And I'm quite happy for it to be an experiment. It's only by experimenting do we learn. Right, now I know that metallic is going to dry quite quickly, so I'm going to have to be relatively fast on this one. It's important to make sure I get paint all the way to the edges of the plate. If there's no paint, there's no gripping. If there's no gripping, there's no pulling. Right, let's pop, oops, wrong one, let's pop the paper down. Not sure what that's centralised, that was just an absolute hit and miss thing there. Let's just clean the plate off a little bit onto my brayer off sheet. Right, let's put the tissue over the back so I've got 
something I can slide my hand around on. Oh, I've not done it this way before. This works wonderfully. It would if my palette was out of the way. So, just making sure it's fully in contact all the way across. And again, this one will sit overnight and we'll pull it tomorrow morning. Let's see what we've come up with. Oh, that's pleasant. Okay, I'm liking that. Okay, I'm classing that as a success before I've even pulled it. And it's reasonably centralised. That's a novelty for me. So, right, so there you go. That's that one. Now we're on to a really big one. Now, I think I want to get on and lift lift the excess paint off this palette that I've got on the go. Just to make sure that it's it's cleaner. It doesn't have to be absolutely 100% clean, but it does need to be cleaner. Right, the rest of that can just pick up as I work along. Okay, so. Right, we very much wanted this to be autumnal in colours and I'm thinking there's a couple of goldens like the golden whoops golden red oxide which is it's an opaque but use it sparingly and it should be okay um, let's have a look over what colours I've got in here Indian yellow hue that's also an opaque no actually that's almost too transparent that would be a good mix um, now, I want to put something into this that's going to give it a bit of depth as well. What have I got that's going to give it some intensity? Plum purple feels wrong. I'm not sure whether the red wine feels right. That, that hasn't got enough warmth in it for me. Purple might be okay. It's a weird, weird colour combination, but it might just be what I'm looking for. Um, wondering whether I want to put any gold into this. Well, I've got a deep gold here. This is Amsterdam deep gold. It's a semi-transparent. And I think what I might do is I might just brayer a bit of this on before I do the final coating. And I want to do that for the reason that I know it's going to dry in the time it's going to take me to decide what other colour. I quite like that actually. I think I want to put another little bit around here. I'm never very sure with metallics. Um, there's a point at which metallic can make something look really cheap and nasty. And then there's, there's a point at which exactly the same metallic will make something look fabulous and opulent. So I'm never quite sure with that. Right. I think we're going to do this directly on the... Or should I do this directly on the plate? Yes, let's do it directly on the plate. You have to be really careful about how much paint I put down because I do not want this to be so thick that I've got to keep pulling and pulling and pulling stuff off it. Because the problem with that is the more you pull stuff off, the more you're likely to lift the paint underneath. And that is not what I want to do. Is this the orange? It's red oxide. Right, fingers crossed. If I don't have enough on the plate, I'm going to have to let it dry again before I put more on the plate. So I just get this all mixed up across here and see what, what becomes of this. And hopefully I haven't got big blotches of colour now, which I think I have because that plum colour seems to have gone into circles or patches. And if it has, it has. 
Right, I think I'm going to have to get this sorted now. Where's the paper gone? Let's just take that line off there. As with everything, it's trial and error, isn't it? And, and I like experimenting with stuff. I like learning new skills. I like having a go. The sad thing is I seem to like having a go for the first time when I've got the camera turned on, <laughs> which means that you're along with me, whether it's good or bad. And that, that, that can be interesting. I'll make the mistakes for you, let's put it that way. So, I have no qualms about doing that. So, let's just clean this brayer off a bit while it's down here. There you go. And let's just give it a bit of a, a polish up to make sure that it's all fully in, in touch with itself. Right, let's have a look and see what we've achieved. Oh my God, that's amazing. Oh, please goodness, that comes off. I would be absolutely ecstatic if that comes off. That's stunning. I love that. Ooh, fabulous. Right, everything else I think is actually just cooking. Let's just call it cooking, shall we? So at this point, I'm gonna turn camera off. Okay, I'm back. I have to admit, it's not the next morning. Curiosity has got the better of me and I'm going to risk it. Um, they feel, they do not feel cool to me. They feel room temperature. I'm going to see whether this one comes off, this one comes off, the other ones will as well. And I'm just excited. I want to see it. Now, I do want to run my thumb around the edges just in case there's any build-up a paint that might tear the paper and we're keeping our fingers crossed. I'm excited and I want to see if this has worked. Ooh. It's going to be a tough pull this one. Okay it's worked, it's worked really well. <laughs> so well that the plate feels like it's it's glued to the paper. I'm kind of pleased I didn't do this overnight. Whew. Well, I certainly cleaned my plate off. Okay, for one that wasn't planned, one that I wasn't really sure I was going to like, and for one I just threw together, I think that's okay. I mean, am I in shot? I am in shot. I mean, it's interesting. Is it the world's best print? I don't think so. But you know what? It's interesting. That was not bad for one that was thrown together. Right, let's be brave and look at the next one. Right, this is this one, and I really hope this comes off. I love this. This just, this is ex just beautiful. So again, run my thumb around the edges to just make sure that if there's any paint on the edges, it's it's nice and loose it's not going to damage anything this one's coming off a little easier possibly because all of the layers of paint were dry when i put the final on whereas with the one that was the unexpected print that didn't happen turn this around this way just trying to ease off all of the edges Yay! Oh, love it. I really love that. That's that's beautiful. Can you see that? You can see that. I love how that turned out. Absolutely love how that turned out. Right, let's put this to one side. Now let's look at the biggie. I really hope this doesn't damage it in any way because that is spectacular. I'm really loving that. Right, again, I'm going to rub my thumb around the edges just to break up 
any paint that might be there. I think with this one I'm going to have to work from the corners into the centre. I'm glad I used um, a heavier cardstock because I must admit I'm not sure if I was doing this with just regular paper that I would actually be able to pull this off without tearing something. Either I'm having a very weak day or my preparing the gel plates and conditioning them did a better job than I thought. Okay, I'm I am so happy with that. Let's get rid of the gel plate. Okay, that I said I wanted to achieve one print that was a one pull design. That's my one print with a one pull design. That I'm so happy with that. Um, and it worked. The, what I was talking about things that were the first layers I put in, then further back and further back to we all the way back to the back of the design. I'm loving that. That was a success. This was also a success. This one, maybe not so much. But you know what? This is far superior to what I had on the plate and sometimes you just have to go with your gut and go you know what that's not what I want just change it so I did and I didn't stick with any philosophy on how or what or why it wanted to look the way it wanted to look this is just how it came out that's a good enough background for me I will put something else on top of this just to mute this back a bit maybe Maybe a lighter colour just to give it a little more contrast or maybe I might give it a whole a whole glaze of some colour just to adjust it. But these, I am so pleased with those. So very, very pleased with those. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed my little experiment or little challenge to myself. Um, it's that time. It's time to say goodbye. So until next time, I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Bye-bye now.